You found it. Your home for the best content on your favorite team, the Fighting Tigers of LSU. Do us a favor. Subscribe to the channel. Leave your comments below. Be sure to smash that like button. Brian Kelly is nearing completion of his first staff. Now, we told you Mike Denbrock has been officially announced now as uh, LSU's new offensive coordinator. And today, LSU has also made official what was reported over the weekend that Joe Sloan is the Tigers' new quarterbacks coach. So, a little bit of background. Uh, Joe Sloan, young guy, mid-30s, who joined Skip Holtz as a GA at South Florida and left South Florida with Holtz for Louisiana Tech when Coach Holtz took that job. And Sloan has been there ever since. And he has progressively increased his responsibilities since he's been in Ruston. He, in 2013, was the inside receivers coach. A year later, they elevated him to recruiting coordinator. Key title, get back to that in a second. A year later, he was named assistant head coach. That was 20. 15, he was named assistant head coach. And then in 2019, was named co-OC, and in the last two years has been the primary play caller for Louisiana Tech. So, here you have a guy that is a young offensive mind, checks that box. A lot of people, one of the drawbacks people may have looked at with Denbrock have said, yeah, he's 57, this is sort of the, the in vogue thing is to hire the new young offensive coordinator. And look, I mean, we could argue either way of that. I mean, Alabama's in the national championship game, and so is Georgia, and neither of them have, air quotes, young offensive coordinators. Um, you got Bill O'Brien, got uh, Todd Munkin. So you know, not necessarily young offensive play callers. So there's there's certainly the, the appeal, the allure of that the young hotshot wunderkind uh, offensive mind but as we also saw this year, that sometimes comes up snake eyes. And sometimes having an experienced play caller is is the route to go. This is sort of a best of both worlds. You've got the experienced play caller in Den Brock who knows Brian Kelly and what he wants exceptionally well. And now you've got Joe Sloan and the young offensive mind who's also an experienced play caller as well. So you have that guy riding shotgun. I like it a lot. And again, I'm going to repeat what I've said many times throughout Brian Kelly's staff hiring. I'm going to give Brian Kelly the benefit of the doubt. He's the winningest active coach in college football. He's won at four different stops over four decades. He's hired a lot of great coaches. He's won a lot of games. He's earned the benefit of the doubt when it comes to assembling a staff and building a culture and creating an organization let him do what he's done exceptionally well for, for 30 years. Um, the other thing I'll tell you about Sloan that has me very excited is when this was announced, when this leaked over the weekend, I got some texts from some high school coaches in the state, and they raved about Sloan, not only as a bright offensive mind, but as a recruiter, Sloan, his primary areas that he were, was responsible for at Tech, as I've learned, were Baton Rouge and New Orleans. So he is very familiar with the recruiting landscape in South Louisiana and obviously was in Ruston for the last eight years. So he knows North Louisiana very well. Brian Kelly one of the first things he did that maybe made people a little uneasy was he uprooted so much of the culture that's been deeply rooted at LSU from for two decades. From on-field staff, support staff, training staff, everybody. But at a place like LSU, in the state of Louisiana, you have to have inroads into the high schools to be able to take advantage of the fertile recruiting ground. And a lot of people look and say, well, no Kevin Falk and no Corey Raymond and no Ed Ogeron. Well, who's going to do that? Well, look at what Brian Kelly has done. He went and brought in Frank Wilson. That is a grand slam home run. He goes and adds now Joe Sloan, a guy who's young, offensive-minded, can recruit Baton Rouge, New Orleans, north part of the state. 
There's Brad Davis, who was retained from the staff, who's a Baton Rouge guy, who's a technically elite offensive line coach, but you also know can handle recruiting and knows the state well. He's from here. There's one spot left to fill, and the you know whispers are that that's going to be Cortez Hankton, who's the wide receiver coach at Georgia, who's from New Orleans. You can see what Brian Kelly is doing. It's very self-aware to say, yes, I'm not keeping the guy you had here, but I know we have to have that piece. And so he's identifying it. Instead of just bringing his entire staff from South Bend or people he's worked with in different parts of the country, he does have some of that. And I think that's great. It's going to help ease the transition when you have staff members that know what to expect from Brian Kelly. And you've got that with with several of them. And you also have guys that are deeply rooted in this state on staff. And I think that is a real positive for, for what is the thing most associated with the advantage of being at LSU, which is recruiting in Louisiana as the only Power Five in state. If you can recruit the state, start here. That's the inherent advantage you have. When guys like Jamar Chase are, are, are an hour from campus. When, when Emory Jones is five minutes from campus. When Mason Smith is an hour from campus. Like, that's the inherent advantage of being here. But you have to have the people that know how to take advantage of that. And Brian Kelly's doing that. I think it's very smart. So you get a guy that's a quarterback's coach that's specifically going to work with that position. That's a young, bright offensive mind that knows this state and can recruit and has play-calling experience as well, I love it. I think what Brian Kelly is doing to establish this staff and build the entire organization is really brilliant. And he's he's he had a crash course, man. He came in here late, right up against the early signing period, had to put the pedal to the metal to get that early class done. And he did a great job, as we talked about, of the, the quality over quantity early. Now it's finished the staff, continue pushing toward that February signing date and then continue building the roster through and past spring through the transfer portal to get ready for 2022, where there are going to be huge expectations because, after all, it's LSU and the expectations never go away. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.